This is Kigu, I'm Christina. Today we're diving straight in with the HS70 Bluetooth multi-platform headset from Corsair coming in at 99.95 at the time of recording this video. Whoa, stop. I've heard that some of you out there have not subscribed yet. So hit that subscribe button and bell icon to help us out. In all serious, thank you for supporting us. Without you, there is no kick gearing. I'll be looking into the sound quality functionality and specs of this little gem to see what the HS70 Bluetooth multi-platform headset has to offer. There is lots of information on the box here and it's great if it's hanging in a shop as there's loads of stuff you can read about it just off the shelf. Not much of an unboxing experience though, so just straight into that plastic surround and of course we have the manual and warranty card. If you haven't seen our review of the HS60 Haptic by Corsair, I do strongly suggest you check that one out here on KitGuru as it was pretty epic to be honest. If you have seen it, then you will recognize the same type of packaging here with the clip securing the headset and the secret compartment, which houses the USB to USB-C cable, the 3.5 to 3.5 millimeter cable, the mic and the pop filter. Looks wise, the headset is pretty slick. We've got that smooth and soft pleather on the headband, slightly firmer than that on the HS60 haptic here. The same material runs around the cups and inside you can feel the plush memory foam. On the inside of the cup too, there is some really nice mesh. Moving on to the outside of the cups you can see a matte finish plastic running around the edges of the cups and this almost feels rubberized in texture. It's quite a nice bonus really. Not a fingerprint magnet which is really good to see. The metal grill is another nice texture and then we have that Corsair ship logo in the middle. This logo is actually a little bit sharp around the edges to touch but let's face it you're not really going to be rubbing your hand around this too often. The brackets are a matte metal and these sadly do attract grease a little bit. These end with some nice rubber stoppers and in between we have the marked adjustable headband which is really handy to help you get back to your exact setting. There are also some shiny black plastic accents around the edges of the cups which adds to that vast texture and attention to detail. Very similar overall shape and design to the Haptic HS60 but with some exceptions. For instance, when you pull out the adjustment rail you can see that the inside of the top rubber stopper is yellow. This seam also appears around the microphone entry point. I like this as it carries on that design from the box so a plus from me. Whilst we're on the subject, let's look at the controls and the entry points. On the left cup you have a volume wheel. This has no tactile increments however it does mean you can get micro movements and adjustments to exactly the level you want without being hindered by predetermined increments. Next the mic mute button. This is a great feature in the way that this button works. Simple but effective. Press it in to mute and the button stays depressed until you press it again and it releases it and then your mic is back on again. This is great considering you cannot see this and when you are in game if you forget if your mic is on or off you can just simply run your hand over the button and feel its position. We then have the USB-C socket and the 3.5 millimeter socket, the keyed mic socket underneath this tiny rubber bung. Now again the HS60 haptic had this little rubber bung and it just seems like such an easy thing to lose. I would have liked to have seen it being attached to something or hidden in the headset somehow because me personally I'd lose this thing after the first removal. I do see why they did it so you have a clean finish but you know just a personal gripe for me. On the right hand cup we have the power button and a little indicator light to show the power and Bluetooth status which we'll go over a bit more detail in a little while. This button is also very tactile. Talking of the cups though, they don't rotate very much. I didn't find this a hindrance though, they were super comfy. The amount of clamp was a little weak at the bottom of the cups, but because you can move the cups in and outwards, I found it was a pretty good fit. Also, they are pretty lightweight feeling, but they also are heavy enough to move around on your head when you reach down or, you know, pick something off the floor for instance. So there is a little bit of back and forth movement there, especially if you sneeze. <laughs> the cable for the USB to the USB-C is really stiff. I mean, you can make all sorts of shapes and it will stay, but just as easily can be pulled straight again. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Let us know down in the comments what you think of this type of cable. 
The 3.5 mm to 3.5 mm cable is much better. Supple, not easy to kink, and both have a nice braid though. Now, let's talk about what makes this headset pretty cool. You can connect simultaneously to wireless Bluetooth and a wired output. This would be great for someone if they usually have two inputs that they want to listen to at once. For instance, my friend has a Call of Duty game that we play together and we talk together on Discord. Now, these two don't normally go together very well, so he has an overhead headset and a little earbud inside those headset too to hear both things at once. Now, this would be a fantastic fix for him and to have that full volume control of both things simultaneously. You can even use the power button or the MFB or media function button as it's called in the manual to go back and forward a track, play and pause. Also, you can answer and end calls from your phone, which is really cool or not, depending if you want an excuse not to pick up. This means, yes, it's wireless and wired all at the same time and you can use one or the other independently too. Wirelessly, the battery claims to last for about 30 hours and you charge it using the 2.0 port with the USB-C to USB cable. From my testing, I would say that I would agree with the statement here. This battery is really good. The LED light above the power button shows solid red when charging and turns off when fully charged. The LED also has some other functions that it indicates for. For instance, pairing. To enable pairing, press and hold the MFB until the LED blinks red and blue. When the headset is paired, the MFB LED will blink blue. Disconnected blinks red, pairing is blinking red and blue, and connected is single blinking blue. It also turns off after, say, about five minutes, and this is to save battery when there is no input. I also realized that when connected via USB-C to USB, as well as Bluetooth, it was a constant red with blue blinking every now and again. So this headset is fantastic. Fantastic. As you can see, you can use it on all platforms, PlayStation, Xbox, PC, mobile, Switch, you name it. A real great all-rounder. I started to test the wireless capability with claims of up to 30 foot by going to the other end of the room, which is about, I'd say, 12 foot with no walls or interruptions. Then up to 20 odd foot when I went into the end room of this level that I'm on. The wireless on the HS70 is better than my own wireless headset, the Asus ROG Strix Go, because if I go behind a door or anything like that quite far away, my headset signal kind of drops out a little bit. With the HS70s, I had no drop at all, seriously impressed. You can even connect this headset to IQ software, which I'll show you here. For this demonstration, I'm using a USB to USB-C cable to my PC. First, you select the product. If we go to the main page here, you can select profiles and select EQ presets. As you change through these, you will get a voice saying one, two, three, etc. You can also add presets. Not much else here, but it works well and deals with the basic settings. Also, you must have by now realized that there is no RGB. This is a personal and preferential thing, whether that it's a plus or a minus, but you know, there isn't any. I think the headset looks great without it, but I do like shiny things and I would have liked to seen a little bit of RGB. So enough chatting about the HS70 Bluetooth multi-platform headset and what it can do in theory. Let's talk about what happened when I put it to the test. I tried Call of Duty, Hearthstone, ESO, and it was fantastic. There is a profile for every scenario. The first thing I noticed is the volume wheel is analog. And what I mean by that is that it doesn't digitally control your PC. PC, if it's connected via the USB, for instance. I kind of like this though, as I put my main output on my PC to full and just use the wheel to get the volume I wanted. I also had my phone connected via Bluetooth and decided to take a call, which is really good because it says incoming call. It doesn't say the actual contact though, which is a little bit annoying as I don't know anybody's number at all. The only thing it might help you decipher is whether it's a sales call or not. The commands worked really well, double tap to answer and disconnect the call as mentioned earlier. You can also use it to control your smartphone. Tapping that MFB button will pause and play, say Spotify, for example. However, it states in the manual that you can skip back and forward by pressing that button twice or three times to go back. This did not work for me at all and it just kept pausing and unpausing this. And I don't know if that's because my phone is an Android, but I couldn't try it with any other phone because my partner's got the same. So if you do get this headset, let us know down in the comments if you could get that to work. 
remember that you can control each device separately. So say PC and phone, but you do have to do that independently on each device. As if you use the wheel, it will just change the whole mix. So the input coming from say your PC and your phone at the same time. So here is a little mic test for you. This is the mic test for the HS70 headset. So this is me speaking what I would call quite normally with about two fingers width from my mouth. This is me speaking a little bit louder. This is me speaking quite quietly. This is me saying p p p p p. This is me saying b b b b b. So hopefully you can hear all of that nice and clearly. And there isn't much ambient noise in the background, but I'll just be a bit quiet now so you can hear. And there we have it, there's the mic test for the HS70. The mic here is actually quite clear, I was quite impressed with it, nothing really to complain about and the person that I was calling on the other end said it was really clear too, so a thumbs up from me. Sound wise this headset is brilliant, it goes super loud when listening to music and without messing with the software, the bass is really prominent in the mix but you will still get those lovely mids and highs coming through clearly. There is no distortion or breaks on high volume or when you're playing really bassy tracks. Now, gaming wise, it's a winner for me. The sound profile is customizable, so you can get exactly how you like it. But for me, it was perfect to begin with. You could hear all the footsteps really well, explosions were realistic, and they weren't blown out. If I'm not playing seriously, I do like to listen to music and play, say, Call of Duty at the same time. And same with Hearthstone and Elder Scrolls Online. Now, I normally play on my PC so I can have multiple things going on at once as a norm, but I can't have my calls to my headset. This is really a perk of having this headset, depending on how you look at it, of course. You might not want to answer those calls. <laughs> In conclusion, yes, just yes, yes to it all. It's a fantastic headset. It does pretty much everything that you could possibly ask for. And I would go as far as to say I prefer it to my own headset, the Asus ROG Strix Go. The HS70 would have took its place at the top as being the best all round headset had it not been for that skipping track issue. However, a big thumbs up from me, but let me know down in the comments what you think of the HS70 Bluetooth headset. And have you already got a favorite headset? If not, you will be buying this one. I guarantee it's amazing. My name's Christina. This is Kit Guru. I'll see you in the next review. Take care.